Once again on our Tuesday evening, hope you had a good day. Today certainly felt different than what we saw just a couple days ago. The weekend brought 88s to Fargo, a lot of 80s around the region, settled into what's normal for this time of year. First alert weather day, that is where we begin Friday morning. We got widespread frost possible. Now the numbers here, as we look at our lows, 32 to 39. If we're up closer to 39, not really much of a concern. Once you get to 36 uh, to about that 32 number again, that's where the issue comes. That's when frost really starts to develop out there. We'll kind of break it down for you as far as who we expect to see the frost coming up. But again, damage to tender flowers and plants, of course, possible. Uh, if you've been around here, you know the deal. If you're out there, you're growing the things, you've got the plants. Just make sure you bring them in or cover them on Friday morning because of that potential. Now, Average first frost and freeze for Fargo for Grand Forks, September 20th for both. Devils Lake, September 22nd, Detroit Lake, September 14th. Now, none of those areas have seen a frost yet. We're late <laughs> for the freeze, 32 and below, or below 32, I should say. It is early October, again, late September for a couple of those locations. So frost, freeze, we're behind on both at this point. But again, that potential for the first frost likely Friday morning for many areas. 60 and Fargo 60 as well. Grand Forks, that south wind has increased. Still gusty out there. And because of that, again, temperature's not going to drop a whole lot more from what we're seeing right now. Not nearly is cold tomorrow morning or chilly, I should say, as we saw this morning. So September recap, just a couple of quick things to point out. Average temperature for Fargo 68.2. That is the warmest September on record. It was also the driest September on record. You keep that in mind for just a second there. Grand Forks, also the warmest September on record. We did get enough moisture, not a lot, but enough to avoid being the driest. So now we look at drought conditions. We talk about dry, we talk about warmth. We're starting to see just a little bit of that creep in. The area in brown here, that's moderate area in yellow light, not the entire area covered. What that does tell you is we've been dry for a while now. Looks like we're going to continue to stay dry. With that in mind, we could see those drought conditions start to creep up and get a little bit worse out there. We'll keep an eye on that for you, but the next couple weeks uh, don't look very promising for rain. Cold front moves through tomorrow. There's going to be a dry front. Those winds that are from the south tomorrow morning will be from the northwest. Pretty breezy tomorrow afternoon. Not what we saw yesterday. We could see gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Take a look at our morning lows. Again, upper 40s, low 50s. Tomorrow afternoon, a breezy day. Notice the high in Langdon, 60. Roseau, 61. We're at Sisseton, we're at 79 degrees. As that front pushes through, still going to be warming up before we get that cold front moving through areas like Sisseton. Precip chances over the next seven days, getting back to the potential drought. Oh, we've got no chances over the next seven days. So here's what we've got for you. A little bouncing around of temperatures. 75 Wednesday, 63 Thursday, 69 Friday. First alert weather day for the frost. Then we're back in the 70s most every day from Saturday through next Saturday. And I do want to say, I kind of mentioned those drought conditions. It's not if we're immediately going to fall into a drought if we don't see rain over the next mm -hmm. couple weeks. But we're creeping up and we'll continue to creep into that the longer we don't see rain. Especially with the forecast like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Russ. Still ahead here at 10, we'll show you how some local...